What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today we are going to be reviewing the brand new Ronin M. It is the hottest thing in camera stabilization right now and we're gonna take this thing out downtown and put it through a few tests. Let's go. Don't stop. All right guys, so I am here with Patrick Hall. We are both shooting on Nikon D750s. I have the Tamron 24 to 70. This is the uh, 15 to 30. This is Tamron's newest ultra wide angle lens. I have this taped down to 24 and we're gonna walk these streets and just do some comparisons between a 24 millimeter lens with vibration compensation on versus this Mac Daddy here, because I haven't turned it on yet. I can see a little problem already. This thing is starting to kind of lean towards the right. Well, I can just lean my camera a little to the right. <laughs> and comp it. All right, I don't really know everything about this unit yet, but I do know that if it starts drifting like this, you're supposed to recalibrate it. And recalibrate it, we have to get out this little bitty stand, get the stand out, Drew, we'll set this thing down, and we'll try to do a, uh, a calibration, because look, look how much worse it is now. Apparently the car ride over was enough to unbalance the Ronin, so I was forced to use the iPhone app to recalibrate. Am I crazy or is it leaning to the left now? Well, you know what? I think this ground is leaning to the left. Like the calibrate based on the yeah. So I recalibrated again. All right guys, I think I finally have the Ronin here properly calibrated. We're gonna start off really simple. We're gonna do a standard walking shot. We're both gonna walk down this road here Shoulder to shoulder, I'm gonna be using the Ronin, you're just gonna be hand holding it, but you have vibration compensation on, so it should stabilize things a little bit. Let's see how it looks. So obviously that went really well. The Ronin's working perfectly for a very simple test like this. I wanna make things a little bit more difficult for Patrick now. I wanna shoot a low angle walking shot. We've all seen those tests before. Obviously the Ronin absolutely destroys hand holding a camera, but it's a little boring. We've all seen it before. Let's step things up a little bit, make things a little bit more complicated and a little bit more fun. Patrick made a really good point that in certain situations you can get smooth shots just hand holding your camera. So we decided to rent some rickshaws to test out his theory. This is already looking pretty stable to me. Mine's not bad. Yours isn't bad. Yeah. Trying to uh, focus this thing as it's moving is a skill in itself. Is this a tool you would use in a rickshaw? It's working. It's, it's actually working, I'm surprised. And the pans are so smooth on this. Here come the bumps right here. I'm silky smooth, baby. I, yeah, How are you I, doing? I don't think you can even <laughs> make sense of my camera right now. I don't think this camera is resolving any detail here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pass uh, the Ronin back and forth. Go ahead and put your camera down, Patrick. Oh, this is not and, a good idea. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? For any of you wondering why in the world you would buy this over a standard steady cam, this is why. You would never be able to pull this off with a standard stabilizing unit. These electronic gimbals are able to create shots that were literally impossible just a couple of years ago. We also found that tilted pan shots like these were much easier to reproduce with the Ronin than they ever were with a standard steady cam. By this point, we were getting a bit hungry, so we decided to stop off for some dinner. As always, I can't set this thing down. You can't really set it you down. Do <laughs> you can't do that. So once again, I have to get the stand, build the stand, and then set it up on the stand. So Drew, I need your backpack. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect for a dinner time <laughs> conversation. At dinner, we had a few drinks and somebody said, hey, maybe the Ronin is stable because you guys are stable. Would it still work if you were drunk? And we thought, you know what, you're right. Let's test this out. At this point, I'm a little drunk myself. 
And so I'm significantly wobblier than I was. Uh, so I'm going to be relying on this to get smooth shots. We'll see if it actually works. For the next shot, we wanted to see how the Ronin worked going up and down stairs. So we decided to go to a bar that was upstairs. As you can see, the Ronin performed perfectly walking up the stairs. Once it was Patrick's turn, he basically gave up and admitted defeat. Everywhere we went with the Ronin, people were really amazed by it, but drunk people loved it more than anyone else. I don't drink that much, in case you guys haven't noticed. I don't drink that much. This is the most I've had to drink in a long time. A long time. <laughs> you don't have to film this. I'm just saying, we're don't. All right, I'm done. I don't, even want to, I don't even want to do the it anymore. The is sitting alone. I know. After failing my sobriety test, we decided to move on to the next shot. All right, so at this point, I have had a few drinks, and we're gonna do a little bit of a t test. We are going to compare the Ronin to the camera without the Ronin, filming some sliding shots around a pool table. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna run around the table, and I think even though I personally am not very steady right now, this thing is going to make my shots silky smooth. Even though I was on the verge of falling over, the footage out of the Ronin looks absolutely amazing. This looks like footage that you'd see out of any Hollywood movie, and who would have ever thought a drunk guy is recording it? <laughs> So I just witnessed Lee doing his shots with the Ronin, and I have to say, I can imagine they look pretty good. They are amazing. They're not amazing, but they're probably pretty good. It's my turn to go up. I think they're about to break. Let's go break some balls. Patrick's footage looked bad, like born identity fight scene bad. And he was trying his best. He was trying to keep this camera smooth, but it looks so cheap, so cheesy. Nothing about this footage looks professional at all. So what have we learned from this incredibly scientific test? Well, even a drunk idiot can film awesome looking footage with the DJI Ronin, but you have to keep in mind that it's not quite that simple. You do have to keep it perfectly balanced and perfectly calibrated for it to work, but there's a little bit more to the story than that. The DJI Ronin M can actually do so much more than you've seen so far. So guys, you saw us have a lot of fun with this thing, but I also wanna do somewhat of a fair review and show a few more features that this thing has that we weren't able to show while we were goofing off in the bar with it. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And the cool thing about this is it connects to your smartphone. And so all of the customization, all of the calibration that you do with this unit is done through the DJI app. From this screen on my phone, I can actually change all of the settings. I can also calibrate this. I can change every aspect of the way this thing actually works. If I wanna go in and change exactly which direction it's pointing, I wanna go to the tilt axis and I want to change that. And you can see it slowly go up. Maybe I wanna point it down a little bit and it'll do that. I can also change how quickly that it moves. So if I'm going to be panning to the right or the left, I can change, do I want it to pan quickly if I move quickly? So there are so many options within this app that really allow you to customize this, not only to the way you like it to work, but for each individual shot that you're going to get. You can really tell this is a professional unit and it has anything a professional is going to want. One of the other huge advantages of this unit is the fact that it comes with a remote control. I actually had no idea that it was going to come with this, and if you have ever used a DJI Phantom, you'll recognize this remote right away. And like anything DJI, this works so simply. You just turn it on, it automatically connects, and then you can control this unit 
from the remote control. So many other manufacturers would sell you something like this for an additional thousand dollars. This is included with the Ronin. Now the remote control can be used to help you calibrate this unit, but it's also great if you have a two man team and you wanna to work together to get the perfect shot. So what you could do is have one person actually holding this, running down the street or whatever, and then you can have a second person using the remote control with an external screen. They can be seeing exactly what the camera sees and they can be moving the camera around to get the perfect shot. Now, if you're gonna be using a beefier system, a bigger camera, if you wanna have some sort of hardcore follow focus system attached to it, you may be interested in the standard Ronin, which is about 2,500 bucks. This unit's only $1,400 though, which is absolutely incredible for what you get. The fact that you still get the remote control and the average somewhat casual user is gonna go for this unit over the much more expensive and much heavier Ronin. Now my biggest complaints with the Ronin M really don't have anything to do with the Ronin M at all. It just has to do with big, heavy, expensive stabilization units. I don't like the fact that this thing has to be calibrated all the time and you have to get everything perfect before it works. But even with a standard steady cam, you're gonna be dealing with that. I don't like the fact that I can't set this thing down without carrying the stand around with me everywhere, but you're gonna have that same problem with a steady cam as well. You're gonna have to have some sort of unit, especially if you're gonna have the vest with the arm. There's so much more that goes into it. So none of my issues with this unit actually have anything to do with the Ronin. It's just that this isn't for casual users. You're not going to casually pull this out and just grab a shot and then put it away or take this with you to the restaurant and just set it off to the side. Everywhere we went that night that we were filming, people were coming up to us saying, do you have a permit? Why are you here? What are you doing? It was only a few bars that you guys actually saw us in who didn't really care what we were doing, but all of our standard DSLRs, absolutely no problem, nobody cared. Tripods, nobody cares. But when you walk around with this thing, especially with the stand, it's a little crazy, right? So you may be asking yourself, is there another option, Lee? Is there something that can get stable footage that isn't so heavy and so big and so cumbersome? And believe it or not, there is. This right here, guys, is a gimbal built for the GoPro. And this is by Feiyu Tech. This is the G4 gimbal. I just bought this on Amazon for 220 bucks. Certainly hard to beat that. And what's so awesome about this is obviously the size. You can literally put this in your pocket. But what's even better than that, I can flip this thing off and there's no calibration whatsoever because it's made for one camera and this camera doesn't have any sort of zoom. It doesn't have any sort of external lenses that are gonna throw the balance off. So all you have to do is press this bottom button and this thing goes beep and just comes to life. And many of the settings that the Ronin has, this one has also. So right now, if I, tilt this down, the camera's not going to tilt with it, right? But if I double tap this button on the back, all of a sudden now, I can get this to follow my tilt. So you can see this is capable of getting very stable shots as well. So let's compare these two real quick. Let's go outside and get a shot with the Ronin walking down the sidewalk and we'll get the same exact shot with this GoPro gimbal. As you can see in this side-by-side -side example, the footage out of my GoPro 4 Silver looks very similar to my D750, but you will notice that there is a good bit more movement with the GoPro than there is with the Ronin system, but that may not be the gimbal's fault. Now, one downside to both of these units is that they stabilize panning, tilting, and rolling, but they do not stabilize up and down motion. And the nice thing about the Ronin is, it's extremely heavy. And so as you're walking with it with two arms, it can't vibrate that much. It's, it's a little bit more of a up and down motion. Whereas this is so light and you can just carry it with your fingers that each step you can see a little vibration. It actually has nothing to do with these units not stabilizing or one stabilizing better than the other. I bet though, if we were somehow able to suspend a good bit of weight off of the bottom of this, I bet we could get very similar looking shots. To put this to the test, I held a heavy camera in the same hand as the gimbal to cut down on a bit of the vibration. As you can see in this example, it's still certainly not perfect and it's not as good as the Ronin, but it is much better. In this comparison, I've added a 10% stabilization to both clips and you can see that the Ronin and the GoPro gimbal look almost identical. Now keep in mind guys, yes, you can get awesome looking shots with the GoPro in bright daylight, but you're not gonna be able to shoot in low light. You're not gonna be able to get shallow depth of field like you're able to get with the DSLR. In conclusion, the Ronin M is unbelievable. If you're looking for something that can stabilize your professional video camera, 
look no further. This is absolutely better in every way than the steady cams that I used to use. But if you're a casual user and you don't want to deal with the calibration and carrying this heavy thing around all the time, you may want to consider the GoPro gimbal. It's pretty incredible. Too.